This is the second in the series of informal film reports on some of the test work at the Arnold Engineering Development Center near Tullahoma, Tennessee. Tests supporting Project ABLE-1, the lunar probe, had been made in the high-altitude engine test cells of the Arnold Engineering Development Center. Approximately 30 solid propellant rocket motors of several different types and sizes were tested in the initial phase test. The work thus far has been concerned with motors used for third stage boost, for spin stabilization, for verniers, and for the retro rocket which decelerates the probe as it approaches the moon's gravitational field. The rocket motors installed in the third stage and probe section of the Project ABLE vehicle were tested under high altitude conditions for various reasons. The 50 pound thrust spin rockets which stabilize the vehicle after second stage separation and which also are used as verniers for final trajectory adjustments were tested to check the effects of their exhaust on the thir third stage motor and the probe. The effects were negligible. The 900 pound thrust retro rockets were tested to determine total impulse and temperature distribution on their casings, for excessive heat could damage the instrument payload. Results were acceptable. However, the most significant test results were obtained during testing of the 3,000 pound thrust third stage motors. More than 20, including five different types, were tested. This is a calibration model of one of the third stage motors being mounted on a thrust stand before being installed in a test cell. Various types of nozzles were tested during the program. The tests were run in the high altitude test cells of the engine test facility. Instruments recorded thrust, total impulse, the rate at which fuel weight decreased, and other aspects of operation. The objective was to compute precisely the gain and velocity imparted to the lunar probe by the motor. This is extremely critical, for even minute errors could cause the probe to miss its target in space. High altitude conditions were created by pumping down the cell and its exhaust ducting to simulate an altitude of approximately 70,000 to 80,000 feet. For even higher altitudes, a tandem diffuser ejector was used. The rocket's exhaust is captured by a diffuser duct to produce desired pressure recovery and an auxiliary ejector driven by air or steam augments pump down prior to firing the rocket. Altitudes of more than 100,000 feet were attained. This is a downstream view into the diffuser ejector. The particles in the rocket exhaust are grains of ignited solid propellant. This typical plot for one type motor shows the build up to the 3,000 pound thrust level and the drop-off as the motor nears cutoff at about 40 seconds. This plot indicates thrust versus time for another motor. All six of the motors of this type tested had a continuation of burning after the prescribed cutoff. There had been no indication of this in prior tests. The blips showed that the burst of burning or chuffing lasted almost 160 seconds beyond regular cutoff. Each represents an additional burst of 300 to 500 pounds of thrust. This test run shows the chuffing. As the motor nears cutoff, the shock diamond moves back into the glowing nozzle. Burning stops. Then, a few seconds later, some residual fuel reignites. The flame bursts forth, and additional thrust or a chuff results. This chuffing could cause the third stage motor to accelerate shortly after being separated from the probe and collide with it, probably bumping it from its prescribed trajectory. This type motor was disqualified for use in the Project ABLE-1 vehicle. A second significant finding was the failure of the nozzle. Various types of plastic or steel reinforced plastic nozzles deteriorated when subjected to high altitude operating conditions. These are nozzles prior to a test, and this film shows a nozzle failure. In some cases, the nozzle separated from the motor. Test data helped the manufacturer devise improved nozzles. 
This is a typical nozzle deterioration following high altitude tests. The nozzles had operated satisfactorily when fired at sea level. The value of the test data produced during this program is indicated by the increasing demand for testing other and more powerful rocket motors, both solid propellant and liquid fuel types, at the Arnold Engineering Development Center.